All right, that was our first helicopter. Our first helicopter sighting at our siege at the Regal Cleaners. Oh, my God. 2830i. Regal Cleaners, you know what happened. You know why I'm doing the siege. You know I'm stuck in this car. What? 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 What's on the side of me? Well, it looks like it's a cart. Oh, my God. It says shop us often. Our inventory is always changing. A real treasure hunt. Yeah, like like Warren, like hunting down this Warren or the Larry who never showed. No, it turns out Warren is a felon, right, from the grocery outlet. I guess he's friends. Listen, guys. Are they coming for you? No way. They're coming for me. Why are they coming for me? Ah. Well, I got in trouble with you guys, right? Yeah, I got in trouble with you guys. And I finally had to take a stand, right, Warren? Once I saw you driving around here late at night. Turns out you have a much better car than I do. Wow. Turns out you you talk funny because you yell at Steve Law over here. You guys are in it together. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, I own the Regal Cleaners. You don't understand my squatting loss. Yeah, I squatted it long enough. Nobody's saying anything, right? And I've done the packaging. I've had things delivered. I've taken over. We are going to find out how to open that key box right now since nobody has touched it, since the PI ruined it a couple years ago, right? What did he do, this PI? Well, a lot of bad things. And, of course, I'm not going to tell anyone anything until you guys, you know, Put the Lord's channel back up. That's right. And they are going to point out all the mean ones, all you Karens. Let's go through the list. Seven Graham Graham says, let's just go through the list. Uh, let's not do his Howard the Duck routine where he came back as the Count of Monte Cristo, threw off his mask, and we discovered instead of this timid, wonderful person who just wanted to play the cello and do rock groups and shit, well, instead, he turned out to be the only First Amendment auditor in all of Santa Barbara. Now, did you think that would be satisfying? No, it turned out to be very unsatisfying because he is also the only cellist in this town of Santa Barbara, California, home of the newlyweds and nearly deads for over, I don't know, He's been in this town since 1969. I guess he was four years old. He saw with his actual eyes the oil spill. The oil spill, he saw it by East Beach. It was just black sand all the way up to whatever the Milpa Street, whatever that street was. It was ugly. My grandfather was learning that his American dream was a fake. And he was retiring. Holy shit. He had nothing to leave me. He just threw me in the tar and said, get used to it. We're going to figure ways of taking this off with butter and olive oil. I mean, we'll go European on it. But they didn't allow us. And he explained that. The last one that just happened a decade ago, he came down, yeah, from up above. And he said, dude, you can't let it happen again. You can't let them shut me up, you up. And he explained the story. He said, son, when I was almost 100 in that mean place that they called an old people's retirement home across the street from Oak Park in Santa Barbara, the, he would explain to me in this broken Russian that was hardly working anymore because he was dying of what? Alzheimer's. But he could explain to me every day, he said, get me out of here. They want to strap me down in this chair. They won't let me out. I was out on the freeway. And he explained he walked through Oak Park. He was always walking with Oak Park with me. So I knew he was telling the truth. I knew you guys threw him down the stairs. Orderly, there's two of you. I see how you looked at him. I see you didn't, he was getting you in trouble because he was escaping, but it was your problem. Just like Warren and Larry, whatever your last names are, whoever has your first names and whatever last names in Santa Barbara, California are going down. It's like the policeman, like that dude who came to me, the velvet fog. No, the velvet, he was wearing his velvet pajamas. 
and the badge did not look real and underneath there was no number and he told me he was going to be better. This retiring cop with the gray hair, he said, I will be better and allow you to finish your phrase. Not like those other policemen, like the ones when you were 13. Whoa, has the Santa Barbara jail changed much? He didn't know about the 1968 oil spill. What is he going to know about my grandfather being thrown down some stairs to his death? by some orderlies inside this place. It's across from Oak Park. My grandfather would be like, Oak Park. Now, now just because some orderlies like this Warren or this Larry, I haven't even seen you yet, Larry. All I know is you were scared of me. So was Warren. You all disappeared. You let your own, this little girl, to work on her own at the counter. While citizens were saying, are you threatening? And I'm just going, no, just look. But I could do all this stuff. And both Larry and Warren were not protecting this girl who could be anybody's daughter. Dude. And she didn't know your last name. And the orderly who just came out next to my car and said ah she's just got enough time to put stuff in her own car before she went back to playing with her phone yeah screen time they all have screen time can't you give them a place it's so big have them do it out back but instead they sit in front show us their butts so all we see is this back with your lettering on it Whatever it says, there's a big sign before we walk into this grocery outlet and I film it first and last before leaving. It says, we are in this together. And there's another thing saying, we will help you. They did not do that. They ridiculed me. They made fun of how I talk. That's always been. But not only that, they say they got these rules, this private that I can't film. No, that's unsafe for that girl. And they walked away after saying these orderlies of you, these security guards that did not protect who needed protecting, which was the girl in front. And they left her with me. Supposedly, after they harassed me, after the guy flips me off the day before, this Warren, who's still there yelling at Steve Law in the middle of the night and then screeching off in this black wonder car. So you're giving him a black wonder car They're screaming with Steve Law, who just yells at people at the Soapy Studs, and he yelled at me. He took my own property in front of my own place, not understanding that the sidewalk is not their personal, private domain. He cannot come in front of my sidewalk. Like the Syrian said, I could not stand on their mat, which is on public property but they said this mat made it private so they called the cops on me because i was playing this anti-semite music to piss off these syrians right because they kicked me out of their place since i stopped drinking alcohol yeah they didn't like it i just you know a little bit of water a little bit of aspirin i don't spend as much as i did every day spending about 40 to 100 bucks on booze in that place that they weren't even there yet that the guy who owns it now would tell the other guy no the other owner i don't think so and you were not there in the 70s when i drove up on this schwinn i'm making it all about the schwinn five speed with the ball breaker and the big old banana seat until you guys you syrians you workers of the uh, sears and Roebuck Shell Company. Dudes, I'm taking out that movie, American Interdite. If you haven't seen it and you live in Santa Barbara and you're looking at me, don't say anything because I saw that movie in the 80s. If you haven't seen it, go try to find it, but don't be talking to me. None of you. If you can look back to 1969 and not be able to say I had my feet at East Beach, I was about to go get a big stick, which is an ice cream. It's a big, big, wonderful ice thing that we used to get there. And there used to be great showers. There might still be one fucked up shower. But my grandfather, every morning, I remember from 1969 on, He would get up, no matter what, if there was the fog, if the high tide was way up, he would go and this old man would just swim and he'd yell at me from the, don't be a pussy, get in. And I remember from four to five to six to seven to eight to nine, I never wanted to get into that ocean. Right up to when I saw Jaws 
And I never wanted to ever get back into that ocean. So if you haven't seen the Jaws, the original, seen it right when it came out at the movie theater, like me, in Santa Barbara. If you saw it at the Granada when it was original and it was a huge theater that was almost as big as the Arlington. If you saw it at the Arlington, like we saw everyone in Santa Barbara, The Shining opening for the first time. Well, we all knew each other in there, and they knew that me and my friends, we weren't supposed to be in. We weren't old enough, but they didn't care back then in the 70s. They just knew, oh, I'm going to ask my son's son if they liked whatever scene, or did they get what that scene meant? It was so different. I remember when I heard that there, there was a scene where, I mean, the, it, it could drop, you could just drop a pin while we were watching that movie i believe it's just when the dates were going by and jack nicholson's eyes were doing something he's playing ball inside this hotel we don't know but suddenly they just shift the dates on it they just show another day like weeks later and we haven't even seen behind his head yet like the camera's behind jack nicholson's head he looks like he hasn't been washing but we just saw the date and the whole room went oh Yeah, it's that kind of movie. Whoa. Yeah, I remember which we had won at that time. LBGTGTQ personality. And we loved the guy. He was in he was the best actor. Sorry about that. Who cut in? That was my mama. <coughs> so you know my mama, I've been trying to teach you all like everyone. You got to do the opposite show. Nobody wants to do the opposite show. So I'm starting with her because she's going to be talking to all of you. Yeah, Jeremy. Oh my God. When you're sitting down with my mama and my sister. Oh my God. And you're going to have to explain all this. And you're thinking you never had to explain it. And Warren. Oh, my God. My mama's going to pull out the Black Lives Matter on you so hardcore. What are you going to say? How are you going to explain all these videos where you said all that shit to me? Inside a store. Or you flip me off in front of everyone. Or Steve Law. All those times you're just yelling randomly. Just yelling. But you're using the F word and the N word. And it's okay for you in the middle of the night. But you don't care. You're yelling at the top of your voice that you don't care about any of the clients in the lemon tree. Who are you against? Is it the manager? Is it the owner? Did they give you a bad night? But you know how huge it is? Do you know that there's families? I'm looking right now. They got a stand. It says Santa Barbara Family and Life. That's a newspaper from Santa Barbara. Do you even know a family or life? You told me when I first met you, Steve Law, from the Soapy Suds, as you were trying to diss this poor Pepe, who had your back when I came back and I said, you know, be careful. I think he's trying to get your job or your morning hours because he kept saying all this crap. And he'll make a big deal out of some lint being in a, in a, in a thing. And he'll yell all over this place that says no bicycles or skateboards allowed. And we do it because we can run you right over. But this guy's voice, just like the Warren yelling, and then his friends yelling as they shut up and shut out the grocery outlet. And I'm telling you, dudes, all your places are going to close. I'm, if I can sit here and right now you scratched up my car with your shop us offer, whatever, your cart has scratched my car. I can't get out. Now, what the hell? That's right. So I'm sitting here. I'm doing my siege. You can tow me, but you ain't moving the cart. Warren is moving it, and he is apologizing. And Steve Locke can apologize by bringing back the cart that he took from me last night. If he doesn't remember, they got to start remembering. You cannot walk around like... You have some sort of privilege to destroy our kid's life with your words and your thoughts. 
and then you pretend like you're security, but when I come and I can take you all down, you were hiding. You were hiding, Steve Law. You know it. You thought I had, yeah, you thought I had something, but I kept telling you, no, I'm vaccinated. I've been tested yesterday. All that stuff. It did not matter. In your eyes, you walked off. Now it's months later. I guess you're okay now. You don't even use the mask. You don't care about us anymore. Where you cared so much, you left. You closed the soapy suds that whole night because you thought I had something by peeing in that bathroom. Dude, go back to school. Learn about biology. Yeah. No, no, no. All of you. And Warren, go to a school. Learn about security. But learn about psychology first. You're going to have time in prison. All of you. So please thumbs down this, people, so that they know. All of you who I talked to, who talked to Misha Bodnar or Lord Crichton or Michael Horton or Misha Bodnar Horton, any of those things. If you heard the beginning of the name me or you heard Misha, I remember that. And you don't remember anything else. I am the First Amendment auditor, only one in Santa Barbara. But just look me up. Misha Bodnar. Jealous. And you will see, I've been an educator with the Music and Arts Conservatory for over 30 years, but it doesn't even matter. There's a PhD next to my name. That didn't even matter, right? I know, because it's a computer error. Just like your felony accounts. Yeah, on any of you I'm talking about. It's a computer error. Uh Uh-huh. But I can use it. Do you have a PhD? Well, let's tell this man. Looks like they're coming to you. They're coming to you, Jeremy, aren't they? You're right there. Where are we? Well, I've just been hanging out at the lemon tree, dudes.